what you gonna do? If you guys are going to buy some grips for your PlayStation or Xbox controls, check out Fatal Grips, link and discount code in the description. Hello everyone, it's TF Films here and with E3 2016 just around the corner, I thought it would be a great idea to give my predictions as to what will be featured in each conference. As E3 is the single biggest gaming event of the year, we can expect several big hitters, the confirmation of rumours, a few surprises along the way and of course, lots of games. And in this, in this video, I'm just going to be giving my predictions for Sony's conference, so stay tuned for other conferences if you're interested in those. And so, since I don't have anything else to say at the moment, let's bloody go! Bring on the predictions! Okay, so let's get introductions kits off with the biggest rumours to come out of the blue camp, which is undoubtedly the impending release of the PS4 Neo. Now, if you've been living under a rock and you know what the PS4 Neo is, it is an upgraded version of the PlayStation 4 which will contain beefier hardware which will allow it to handle games with enhanced resolutions and frame rates, duh, and also allow some 4K capability. Now, I must say I'm not the biggest fan of this as I don't see doing incremental upgrades to consoles as the best idea. But it still exists merely in rumour form and no official confirmation from Sony themselves as to its existence has been given. And if Sony is going to drop the confirmation bomb, it's going to be at E3 2016. So, what are my predictions for the PS4 Neo? According to rumours, the PS4 Neo will coexist with the existing PS4 model, which means that if it is real, it will be a higher end model with the existing PS4 serving as the base model. What is truly interesting about this though, is that this is the first time we've ever seen a full blown upgrade to a console outside of a new generation. I mean, the closest we've had to upgraded consoles of a Sega 32X, Add on release for the Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis for those watching in the US, and the 4 megabyte RAM kit for the Nintendo 64. So this is a pretty damn interesting prospect indeed. In terms of features, the PS4 Neo is rumoured to feature a HDMI 2.0 port which will enable 4K at 60Hz where available. I do see this as being true should the PS4 Neo be revealed at E3 2016, as it will enable, enable compatibility with 4K TVs, which have come down in price significantly over the past few years. And since the current PS4 is incompatible with 4K at 60Hz, this is a key incentive for Sony to release the PS4 Neo. However, me and many other, other people don't see this being used for games, as the hardware will more than likely be too limited for such a resolution. I am, however, expecting to see at least 1080p 60fps games appearing more often, as the more powerful hardware will likely allow it. Although in recent times, it seems that more and more developers are pushing for enhanced visuals rather than enhanced frame rates, which really bothers me since I'd rather turn off anti-aliasing and turn down texture quality to hit 60fps than run the game with max visuals at 30fps, as the game will be much smoother with less lag. We already know that the PS4 Neo will have better hardware when compared to the current PS4 model, but just what, just what will that hardware be? In truth, nobody really knows. With the current PS4 sporting an 8-core Jaguar APU clocked at 1.6GHz, with the GPU boasting 1.84 teraflops of compute performance, I'm expecting to see the PS4 Neo utilise AMD's new Polaris and possibly Zen architectures with both due with both of them due for release this year. Polaris is AMD's new GPU architecture which will debut with the release of the company's Radeon RX 480 graphics card, while Zen is their upcoming CPU architecture due in quarter 4 this year. There are two routes which I see Sony taking based on this and one of them is incorporating a Polaris GPU along with a Zen CPU into the PS4 Neo. This will allow for Sony to extract more performance from the PS4 Neo, duh as dedicated GPUs tend to be faster than those bundled into APUs, but this also tends to be more expensive as both a CPU and a GPU will have to be manufactured. The second route which I see Sony taking is the utilization of a Zen APU. This will also allow Sony to achieve a performance gain with the PS4 Neo when compared to the regular PS4, 
but APUs are much cheaper to manufacture, which as a result makes this seem like the most logical route for Sony to take with the PS4 Neo in order to better balance price with performance. Speaking of price, if Sony does reveal the PS4 Neo at E3 2016, then it, then it will be likely most of, most of the available information will be revealed, like, like at E3 2013 when the PS4 was unveiled, which include the €399, €399 Euro, and £349 price tags, respectively. On the PS4 Neo side of things, most people are expecting it to retail for the same price as the current PS4 model. However, I don't see this as the case. I'm expecting to see the PS4 Neo cost around $500-$600 depending on the route that Sony takes in terms of hardware, and with the current PS4, the PS4 serving as the base model costing around $300 at present, with the possibility of a price cut when the Neo launches. This coincides with the rumours of the PS4 Neo existing as a higher end model rather than a direct replacement for the current PS4 model and will position the PS4 Neo at a high but reasonable price point which of course depends on feature set and the official hardware specs. If the PS4 Neo does cost $500-$600 excuse me, then I will expect to see at least 1080p 60fps across the board along with 4K compatibility in order to justify the price. So that wraps up my predictions for the PS4 Neo. Let's move on to the next big thing coming from the blue camp, PlayStation VR. With everyone and the mother rambling on about VR and the buzz surrounding the recent releases of the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, it makes sense for Sony to have a crack at producing affordable VR for the masses. With the Oculus Rift costing $600 and the HTC Vive costing a wallet burning $800, both of which not including the PC required to run them, VR may prove a tricky tricky for Sony for a couple of reasons, such as the limited hardware of the PS4 versus modern game PCs, and the cheaper price point Sony is required to achieve in order to make it equitable for the masses it intends to target. Speaking of price, PlayStation VR is already confirmed to cost $400, with prices being similar across currencies. This makes the PlayStation VR the cheapest VR headset on the market, although it's still a big chunk of change. Sony has stated that it does intent, doesn't intend to compete with, with the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, so don't expect Sony to open the gates to hell with this one and blow those two out of the water, because if Sony was trying to compete, they'd set their sights higher than they currently are, and make the, make the headset beefier with a higher price point. At this point, Sony is just exploring the VR realm and just wants to give VR support to the PS4 and so isn't going to launch an all-out attack on the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. The prospect of VR has come a long way since the Nintendo Virtual Boy in 1995, which was only fun if you thought the idea of having motion sickness with 3D related nausea amounted to good fix. Now, VR is more than just a gimmick. It's a promising prospect in both the gaming and real-world landscapes, with uses for VR extending beyond beyond gaming into the uh, training and medical realms, which is awesome. Now for the real talk, what am I expecting to see at E3 2016? With the headset due for release in October this year, I'm expecting to see just what Sony has in store for this thing, as well as on stage demos like Microsoft did when they showed off Kinect at E3 2010. In addition to demos, I'm expecting to see some games. Well, of course, we'll get games when Sony does their imminent demonstrations of the PlayStation VR. But I'm expecting to see just what titles we'll, we'll see over the horizon in due course, such as the end of this year and going into 2017. As well as what the PS4 Neo brings to the table, should its existence be confirmed as at E3 as predicted. So that's the end of my predictions for the PlayStation VR, for now. Which means it's time to get down to the main business, games. I mean, come on, what would E3 be without the games? It'd be a shit show, that's what. But anyway, what games am I expecting Sony to show off at E3 2016? The first game I'm expecting to see at Sony's conference is without question the most hyped game of the year, Battlefield 1. <coughs> it's actually Battlefield 5, sorry about that, anyway. I'm actually going to give the basics here as we'll be going more in depth into my predictions for EA's conference. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. So, what are my predictions for for E3 2016? 
Like I said, I'm saving most of the detail for the EA conference video, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet here. I'm obviously expecting to see some gameplay since... 1. This is E3. 2. This is the most hyped game of the year. And finally, 3. The other two reasons will make it criminal not to. In short, I'm expecting EA to make Infinity Ward their bitch. Speaking of Infinity Ward, the next game I'm expecting to see is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Now, I know what you're thinking, oh my god, Tom Cod is dead, Infinite Warfare is going to be the worst ever, it's going to fucking suck. Well, what I say is you only seem to sod in trailers to save your bitching for later. The reason I'm, predict I'm predicting this for Sony's conference specifically is the fact that alongside the fact that Time Exclusive DLC has switched from Xbox to PlayStation, is that Infinity Ward will no doubt be keen to redeem themselves at E3 2016 in front of the biggest audience they possibly can after all the recent negativity. No doubt Infinity Ward will show off Infinite Warfare gameplay in order to bring some guns to the table and show what the game is really about as the trailer will no doubt have, no doubt have not revealed everything. You know the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Let Infinity Ward talk and then decide whether or not Infinite Warfare is good. So what's the next game? The next game I'm expecting to see at, e at Sony's E3 2016 conference is going to be The Last Guardian. Some of you OGs may remember that this game is nothing new, and in fact has been in development since 2007 and was first shown at E3 2009 with a planned release in 2011 for the PS3. The game was however delayed to death during development, after which it seemed to have been canned. That is until it was announced for the PS4 at E3 2015 with a trailer and a spot of gameplay footage. I'm expecting to see some game, some more gameplay of this title, as it will be interesting to see just how its progress has been made since last year, in addition to a release date. Hopefully it won't get delayed again. That is just some of the myriad of the myriad of games I'm expecting to I'm expecting to show for E3 2016. I'm also expecting Square Enix, Rockstar, Ubisoft and a host of others to be showing off their upcoming titles. So that concludes my predictions for Sony at E3 2016. Stay tuned for my next set of predictions when I'll be looking at what the green cap may bring to the table. I've been Cell Films. I'll see you next time. Peace. Yo. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more content if you haven't already. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter for all the latest updates and stream times. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch to watch all my live streams and get email notifications when I go live. Also, why not check out the latest video by clicking the annotation on the screen. I've been Tower Films, you've been yourself, and have a nice day.